one fun on point for today the expert to talk about it welcome to the etf of the week yes this is the etf of the week where we examine trending new newsworthy unique and intriguing exchange traded funds with todd rosenbluth he's the head of research at vetify and at vetify.com you'll find all the tools and research you need to be a savvy smarter investor in etfs todd it's great to chat with you again my pleasure chuck your etf of the week is the pimco multi-sector bond active etf pyld PYLD, the FIMCO Multi-Sector Bond Active ETF. Now, this is a fund not quite a year old, right? It started, I want to say the inception date was June of last year. PIMCO, which basically created the active bond ETF space, why this new fund with PIMCO and why now? So we are right now heading into the Federal Reserve meeting. As you and I are talking, by the time people are hearing this, we will now know that the Fed has likely kept rates exactly where they were and indicated that there's probably going to be fewer rate cuts than the market has been expecting. We think this is a great time for an actively managed bond ETF. This PIMCO product, as you mentioned, is actively managed by an experienced team and they can go anywhere. So you get to take advantage of PIMCO's top-down expertise and security selection. It's now available and there's some, we'll dive into who's running this fund and the, and the process in a moment, but we're really excited about this fund. The truth is that when it comes to the fund world, if the ETF world were a meritocracy, about half of the funds would go away. And admittedly, we're still building out active, but with PIMCO, with its deep bench and its well-established bond chops, why did they need another bond fund to differentiate from other things? And, and why would I want this one instead of their other ones that are more established? So you're right. So PIMCO has, has been a pioneer within the actively managed fixed income marketplace. They've got products that are focused on the ultra short space. So a product like MINT Mint. They have a product that's more total return or core bond oriented with it by the ticker BOND. This newer ETF, PYLD, is different. It takes on a little bit more risk in seek of income. And we believe that that's what's warranted in this kind of environment. People are more willing to take on risk in 2024 than they were in 2023, given the state of the economy and, and given what's happening with the Federal Reserve. And they want to tap into the expertise of a proven manager. And we think with the PIMCO team, they certainly have that. Yeah, this is an interesting case to me because in these times, you know, you can allocate your assets in fixed income and say, I want this kind of bond fund or that kind of bond fund. This fund is really a go anywhere bond fund. The question I have is, is it old enough? Does it have enough of a track record for us to say that, oh, if they think that in certain conditions, a certain type of paper will do better, that they will really lean in. Like, in other words, it's multi-sector, but how balanced is it going to be? How much is it going to be taking real chances and go, okay, we really want to lean one way or another. This is not a clone of the PIMCO income mutual fund, but it's a similar team that's running it. Dan Iveson being the CIO of PIMCO is the lead portfolio manager for this ETF, PYLD, and he's brought many of the same players that are known for the PIMCO Income Fund. We think that's a good guide for how this fund will perform in historical time periods, the amount of risk that can be taken on. Now, this fund is different. It's, it has duration that's more neutral versus the shorter term oriented mutual fund. But we think that's a good guide. And this fund currently is exposed towards taking on some credit risk. It's in high yield. It's exposed to taking on some securitized risk, leveraging in on the mortgage capabilities that PIMCO has. We really think that this fund is going to go where it sees the best opportunities for reward, mindful of risk. And, and perhaps that's well appropriate given the environment we're in. That means that the really important thing for the investor is to figure out how they want to use this. 
So let's make an assumption that we're dealing with investors who already have some bond exposure. So who should be considering adding this fund and in what kind of allocation versus who, yeah, it's just another bond fund, you don't need it. Yeah, so you'd have to be a believer in active management and have confidence in PIMCO's ability. So that's probably a starting point. If you're currently invested in a low cost index fund tied to the aggregate bond index, you might want to pair an active manager that's going to take on additional risk uh, at the, looking for additional income. You certainly want to have a healthy exposure to fixed income, but be more risk tolerant. This is going to take on more risk than a short-term bond fund or even a core bond fund. And we think investors are going to get rewarded if they're balancing it within the portfolio. But that's why this is probably not your only fixed income allocation. You want to balance this out with other more conservatively managed strategies based on your risk tolerance. Now, I know that you are not necessarily a trend follower, but ETF trends were started by, by Tom Lydon, who was our guest for a long time, the vice chairman at Vetify. This is also an interesting fund that way because being not quite a year old, it doesn't yet have a 200-day moving average. When it has one, which should be like in a couple of weeks, it should be above that 200-day average, but it's about at its 50-day average. Does any of that play into you? Do you want to wait to see this fund be a little more established? Or because it's PIMCO, big fund, we don't worry, and the trend following, you can layer it on. if you want. Well, if you're a believer in trend following, you certainly want to use that data to help sort through what funds are out there. But I like that the fact that the fund is outperforming. It's outperforming the index-based strategies in 2024. I think if I went a little further back in time, based on your data, it would also be performing quite well. So we think investors want to look at past performance that's available for any actively managed fund and then tie in other capabilities that's there. Some folks might want to wait to learn more about this fund. As you mentioned, it's coming up on its 200-day moving average data, it's coming up on its one-year track record. But we think this PIMCO fund is one to watch and why we at Vetify are increasingly educating advisors about PIMCO's suite of products. It's PYLD, the PIMCO Multi-Sector Bond Active ETF. The ETF of the week from Todd Rosenbluth at Vetify. Todd, great stuff. Talk to you again next week. It's my pleasure, Chuck. See you next week. The ETF of the week is a joint production of Vetify and Money Life with Chuck Jaffe. And yes, that's me. You can learn all about my hour-long weekday podcast by going to moneylifeshow.com or by searching for it wherever you find your favorite podcasts. If you want to search for better information on exchange-traded funds, make sure you check out vetify.com. They've got a full suite of tools for you there that's going to help you be a better, smarter, and savvier investor in ETFs. They're on Twitter or X at Veta underscore Fi. Todd Rosenbluth, their head of research, my guest, he's on Twitter too. He is at Todd Rosenbluth. The ETF of the week is here for you every Thursday. Make sure you don't want, miss one by following along. And until next week, happy investing, everybody. Music.